Hello everyone, in this video I am going to discuss about the addition polymers. If you like the video, kindly comment and subscribe. So we will start now with addition polymers. Preparation of important addition polymers. First we will discuss with polythene. There are two types of polythenes. One is high density polythene and the other one is low density polythene. Low density polythene the short form is LDP and high density polythene it is HDP. Here I have written the low density polythene and high density polythene in a tabular form, their preparation. So it will be easy for you to remember. Both LDP as well as HDP are formed by polymerization of ethene that means Ethene is CH2 double bond CH2, the monomer of both high density polythene as well as low density polythene that is ethene only. Ethene means CH2 double bond CH2. Now both are formed by addition polymerization. So high density polythene and low density polythene both are formed by the addition polymerization of ethene. Now here we can see some differences. The temperature range we maintain to prepare low density polythene is 350 to 570 Kelvin, 570 Kelvin. But if you look at HDP, it is little less than this temperature range that is 333 Kelvin to 343 Kelvin. Even if you see the pressure, that difference you can see here. In the case of low density polythene, it is 1000 atm to 2000 atm the pressure applied but here the pressure applied in the case of HDP is 6 to 7 atm you must have observed in the case of low density polythene the temperature applied as well as the pressure applied is higher than that of HDP high density polythene so more vigorous conditions we are using in the case of LDP preparation. Next point, the preparation of LDP as well as HDP required catalysts. Now we will see what are the catalysts we are going to use. In the case of low density polythene, traces of dioxygen, dioxygen means O2 or a peroxide initiator is used as catalyst. Peroxide initiator is familiar for you. We learned this in the initiation step of free radical mechanism of addition polymerization. So here either O2 that is oxygen or a peroxide initiator is used. There are many peroxide initiators but the very common one is benzoyl peroxide and you know the structure of benzoyl peroxide. The structure is C6H5, C double bond O, 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 C double bond O, C6, H5. You know that this bond, O single bond, O bond is called peroxide bond. It's called peroxide bond. O single bond, O. Peroxide bond. So here, you know, it will cleave here. You will get free radicals. The catalyst used is Siegler Nutter catalyst, which is a mixture of titanium tetrachloride and triethyl aluminium. The next point is LDP is prepared by free radical addition and hydrogen abstraction. The same point you can see in HDP that also prepared by the same free radical addition and hydrogen abstraction but low density polythene is highly branched. I can show you here a schematic representation. This is one linear chain. From there, there is a branch. This is next linear chain. Then there is a branch. This is a third linear chain. Then there is branching. Branching can be there like this also. You know that density is equal to mass by volume. That means mass per unit volume. So if I'm taking here as unit volume, the number of particles present or the number of molecules present is 
very very less right because of this branching in between these two linear chain there is lots of gap but if you come to the hdp which is less branched and has close packing so they are actually linear polymers much branching is not there so the structure will be one linear chain the next linear chain then the next linear chain next linear chain it's going like that so if you take per unit volume you see almost similar size i took here consider this as unit volume you can see more number of particles here but here you can see only less number of particles because more gaps are there so definitely density will be more because this place how many particles are there that many particles mass we have to consider here volume is same both the cases but here mass is less here mass is more so definitely density will be more for which one high density so this is for high density polythene and this is for low density polythene so low density now you understood why it has low density because the mass per unit volume is very less so density automatically become less but you have to understand here we have close packing because of close packing density is more here close packing is not there because of this branches but both the cases we have free radical addition and hydrogen abstraction now when we check the chemical reactivity both are inert both are tough but ldp is flexible and hdp is hard we are using that for making buckets dust bin bottles pipes etc and since it is flexible we will use ldp to make squeeze bottles flexible pipes etc second addition polymer that is teflon teflon's chemical name is poly tetrafluoroethene poly tetrafluoroethene so this is actually tetrafluoroethene this is tetrafluoroethene tetra means four fluoro means fluorine ethene means two carbon with a double bond so this is tetra fluoro ethene now in presence of a catalyst the polymerization takes place and the catalyst is per sulfate catalyst and you have to heat it and high pressure also we have to maintain that time this bond will break the pi bond will break and you know that after that the addition polymerization will takes place so cf2 double bond cf2 become cf2 single bond cf2 but n times because i have taken here n times n means it can be any large number now teflon is also chemically inert teflon you know that the non stick cookwares you can see a black color coating the non sticky the water resistant surface the black color surface that is actually teflon teflon coated okay even there are certain umbrellas with teflon coating so the water will not stick on that the water will be just move away they are resistant to attack of corrosive reagents you know the dishwash we are using sometimes it will be very concentrated but if you use that on a teflon surface a teflon coated vessel it's not going to be removed unless you rub with some hard object now we can see some uses of teflon is used for making oil seals gaskets and non stick surfaces of utensils the third addition polymer that is called polyacrylonitrile generally call it as pan p a n so acrylonitrile that is ch2 double bond ch cn you know that ethene is ch2 double bond ch2 from ethene one hydrogen is replaced by the functional group cn then we call it as acrylonitrile nitrile is the iupac name of cyanide so you can see here cn that is cyanide now in presence of peroxide catalyst the addition polymerization takes place and i told you this double bond that means the pi bond will break and two bonds will be appeared on the two sides of carbon so this is our polyacrylonitrile that is called pan now pan is a substitute for wool used for 
the manufacture of fibers like orlon or acrylan then the fourth one that is pvc polyvinyl fluoride you must have heard about pvc pipes so what is pvc again the parent is ethene ch2 double bond ch2 but one hydrogen is replaced by cl so this is called vinyl chloride by addition polymerization you will get pvc and pvc is normally used for making water pipes rain coats uh, handbags etc now polypropene poly means many propene so many propene so this is the propene molecule propene means three carbon in means double bond should be there so this is propene n molecules a large number i have used here so addition polymerization takes place you will get polypropene only one thing you have to be very very careful while writing always better write this ch3 down then you will not make mistake if you write the ch3 here straight and then put a bond then here double bond will not be there that means the carbon's valency will not be satisfied but ch3 will have five valency also meaning i am telling you don't write like this ch2 ch ch3 like this please don't write this is wrong reason this carbon's valency you see 1 2 3 but this carbon's valency three hydrogen already there then fourth valency fifth valency so this is wrong don't write like this reaction is going to happen on the double bond addition polymerization is taking place by the breakage of double bond okay double bond will break and form single bond that means the pi bond of the double bond will break you know that sigma is more stronger than pi now the last addition polymer that is polystyrene so styrene again it's coming from ethene only ch2 double bond ch2 last that two is replaced that means one hydrogen is replaced by a phenyl group this is this you cannot call as benzene ring this is not c6h6 it is only c6h5 now addition polymerization takes place and you know that i am going to get this this is called polystyrene it is an insulator so we are using it as a wrapping material then uh, you know tv radio cabinets we can make first one what we learned is polythene right polythene you know that ch2 double bond ch2 this is the monomer its name is ethene now the second one that is pan poly acryl nitrile i told you it is derived from or ethene only but the last hydrogen or the second hydrogen of this carbon or this carbon any carbon you can consider is replaced by cn cn means it is c triple bond n so this is the monomer of poly acryl nitrile this is called acryl nitrile i told you nitrile means cyanide only now third one is pvc what you supposed to do ch2 double bond ch that two will not be there that second hydrogen is replaced by cl so we call it as vinyl chloride vc i am writing vinyl chloride so many vinyl chloride join we call it as polyvinyl chloride now the fourth one that is teflon you know teflon teflon both hydrogens from both the carbons that means these two hydrogens and these two hydrogens are replaced by fluorine so it is cf2 double bond cf2 what will be its name total four fluorines are there so it is tetra fluoro this is again ethene only because it's derived from ethene then the fifth one polystyrene so styrene should be the monomer that is again from ethene the two won't be there one hydrogen is replaced by 
a phenyl group. Phenyl group means this group is C6H5. This group is called phenyl group. Okay. This group is called phenyl group. Polypropene is there. That is very easy. You know that propene is the monomer. Don't forget to subscribe.